On the way home from the San Juan Islands, I stopped at Illahee State Park near Bremerton and was treated to a uh, jellyfish swarm. Man, there was a bunch of them. There was, uh, they were all white jellyfish. Now there's several, quite a few different species of white jellyfish in the sound, but we just lump them all together in one category and call them moon jellies. The, uh, <clears throat> the floats of the pier are in kind of a T shape and the tidal currents caused a whole bunch of them to collect in one of the corners of the T. Either that or they're having a cluster or something. As spectacular as it was from the surface, uh, I decided to hook up the uh, camera to the photo pole and put it underwater. So we'll just kind of dip below the surface a little ways and uh, take a look at them from a different perspective. The current was probably moving about one mile an hour. And this jellyfish parade went on for about four hours, which means it was probably three or four miles long. There's an interesting interaction between the crab and the jellyfish. Uh, there's obviously some particular part inside the jelly that uh, they do consider edible, and he's going to grab himself one here pretty quick, as soon as somebody blunders too close. He's ready. He's looking. Here comes the victim. Now see, he's uh, he's digging something out and stuffing it in his mouth. Maybe the egg sacs or something. Not really sure. <laughs> Not a whole lot of edible material in those things. They're 90% water. Like I said, there's uh, quite a few different species of white-colored jellyfish in the sound, and we just kind of lump them all together in one category and call them moon jellies. Now that one there obviously didn't have what he wanted in there, so looks like he's just going to discard it and let him go. This uh, slow-moving parade was just it was just amazing. I've never seen this many jellyfish in one place in the sound before. Many places in the world, they're reproducing to such numbers that they're getting to be a huge problem. They foul fishing gear and uh, uh, plug up water intakes and just do all kind of stuff. And not just this particular species, it's all the different jellyfish species worldwide are increasing. Because uh, one thing, the water temperature of the ocean is warmed. And uh, it's gotten more acidic and the uh, conditions that are detrimental to most other sea life greatly benefit the jellyfish. They can live in primordial soup where a lot of things can't. So they may become the new dominant species of the oceans. There is something fascinating about the way they move. These guys, uh, by the way, do not sting. Uh, you can you can come in contact with them and uh, they don't seem to hurt you any. However, the other two species that we seem to see a lot in the sound, uh, one we call a fried egg jellyfish, which is orange, white around the edges, looks like a fried egg. That one and a bright red one called the lion's mane, uh, those two guys uh, you don't want to touch. They will literally sting the living daylights out of you and it's going to feel like your skin is on fire. 
These guys are totally harmless. I made the mistake of getting too close to those other kind when I was a little kid. I haven't done it again, let me tell you. Now, uh, off the other side of the pier, it was a completely different scene. There were the same batch of jellies drifting through on what seemed like an endless parade. But here, pretty soon, a huge school of shiner perch came in and started swimming amongst them. Now, the shiners are a small species of sea perch. They don't grow much over three inches long at the very most. Kind of an important uh, bait fish. And now they're starting to come into view as they move into the area. Uh, your shiner perch and all our species of sea perch in Puget Sound are placental fish, meaning they, uh, they give birth to live young just like mammals. But that's where the similarity stops. Uh, once the kids are out, they're totally on their own, and most of them get eaten. But there always seems to be plenty of them. Just about any larger fish in the sound will snap these little guys up. Looks like the Seattle Aquarium or some kind of a display. Absolutely amazing scene. I'm glad that I had the underwater camera with me. There were just uncountable thousands of perch and jellyfish, both. Maybe even millions. The sun is at a different angle on this side of the pier, which probably accounts for the kind of greenish tint. Just kind of sit back and watch them pulsate around and watch the perch swim in and out of them. Like I said, in many parts of the world, uh, increasing jellyfish populations are becoming a big problem. They foul fishing gear, plug up water intakes, and also when their numbers explode uh, to unusual proportions like this, they filter out the plankton in the water, which is the base of the food chain, which makes the food for everything else. So I don't know if it's caused by natural conditions or by pollution that we've dumped in the water or what, but uh, you're certainly seeing more and more of all our native jellyfish uh, all over Puget Sound all the time. Even seeing them in the middle of winter now, they used to uh, move into deeper water for the winter months, but uh, I spotted a few around all last winter when I was out blackmouth fishing. Oh, well, that's about it for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed this little little display of uh, Mother Nature run amok. I'll see you next time. This is Rocky signing off.